the country's doing right now really well, but it's illegal and you're not supposed to have it and it's not supposed to be leaked. How bad Obamacare is, and it's the worst anybody's ever seen. It's a disaster. Obamacare is a disaster. If I had the greatest bill in the history of the world, they would not vote for us because they hate the Republicans, probably hate me. But wiretap covers a lot of different things. I think you're going to find some very interesting items coming to the forefront over the next two weeks. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight we just sat down for an interview with President Donald Trump. This morning we boarded Air Force One with the President at Andrews Air Force Base outside D.C. and flew with him to Detroit where he held a meeting with auto industry executives. When we landed, the President spoke with us at Willow Run Airport. That's where the Ford Motor Company built the bombers that helped win World War II. He had a lot to say about his tax returns, the wiretap controversy, which was interesting, Obamacare, and of course, the press. Watch. Mr. President, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So last night, your tax return from 2005, the first two pages, appeared, and the reporter who got it, he said in his mailbox, said that the front of it is stamped client copy, and he suggested that it did not come from the IRS, but that it was leaked to him potentially by someone in the White House, was it? Well, certainly not from the White House, that I can tell you. Uh, I don't know where they got it. Uh, this guy's been following me for 25 years. He's, you know, he's not much. And I don't know, I have no idea where they got it, but it's illegal. And you're not supposed to have it. And it's not supposed to be leaked. And it's certainly not an embarrassing tax return at all, but it's an illegal thing. They've been doing it, they've done it before, and I think it's a disgrace. So it showed that you paid um, about a little less than 25% uh, federal taxes on your income that year, which was more than a lot of people, but it's still less than the 40% that wage earners, people with no investments, would be paying. Is it fair to have a tax system, I know you're doing tax reform soon, where wage earners pay twice the tax that investors do? Well, I actually paid less than that, and it is not fair because the income was actually $250 million for the year. And if you notice, there was about $100 million in tax deductions right. and depreciation and various other charges. So actually the income was at the 250 level and if you look at it, it's really a lower number and no, I don't think it's fair. And I've been complaining about it for a long time because I don't care about me anymore. I care about the people out there. And you know, me, I'm very satisfied. I'm not going to go back into building major buildings someday. I'm not going to be doing what I used to do and used to have a good time doing it. This is what I'm doing now and I'm saving a lot of money. On the airplanes, I saved $725 million. Probably took me a half an hour if you add it up right. all of the times. And, and we've saved a tremendous amount of money in government already. And that's just the beginning. I will tell you, the tax, people are paying too high a tax. And one of the reasons I want to get the health care taken care of, and it has to come statutorily and for other reasons, various complex reasons having to do with politics and also Congress, it has to come first. It really has to come first. But one of the reasons I want to get it finished, ideally soon, is because I want to start on the taxes. Uh, people are paying too high. Companies are paying too high. It's affecting our jobs. It's affecting a lot of things. Now, with that being said, the country's doing right now really well. The level of optimism is up highest it's been in 15 years. Uh, you see the kind of numbers coming out. It's amazing. The enthusiasm I saw this morning on Fox and Friends. I watch. I like that group of three people. But they had a man who was saying Trump is the greatest president ever and there will never be one like him. Now, the thing is, I've only been there for like 50 days. But he was very enthusiastic. But he was talking. He's a manufacturer. And I've taken off regulations right. by the thousands. And we're just, we're just starting. We're just starting. So there's great optimism about the economy. But we have to get the taxes reduced. But you want to start. And, and you can imagine a system where I think federal top is a little sure. less than 40%. Sure. Obviously, taxes at the top on well, if you capital take, are 20. But you'd like to see them... Has to go down. Oh, it's going to go. Well, it's going to go. First of all, it's going to go way down for the middle class. It's going to go way down for business. Right. I'm going to try and get the 15% level if we can for the business. I think we'll probably be a little bit higher than that, but we're going to try and get the 15% level. There's tremendous waste in this country. There's tremendous, you know, the bidding procedures in the country. I'll give you an example. Medicine. I met with a man that I really liked, Elijah Cummings, Congressman, and he was in my office and so passionate about prescription drugs and drugs, the fact that they're so expensive in this country and so expensive for people. And I'm going to work and put in this bill or shortly thereafter a new bill bidding 
for drugs and prescription drugs. You go to Europe, they buy them for a fraction from the right. same company. They buy them for a fraction of what they pay in the United States. Because we have a middleman system and we have a lot of bad systems, but basically we don't have a good bidding system. And we're going to get drug prices so far lower than they are now, your head will spin. So you said in a subsequent bill, let's talk about this bill. So it's been seven years since Obamacare passed and Republicans have said the whole time we're going to get rid of it. Yeah. And we're going to give you something better. Are you satisfied that the bill we're now looking at, that Paul Ryan is pushing, is the best that Republicans could do after seven years of thinking about it? I think we're going to have negotiation, but you have to understand, we only have 52. We only have two votes. We have a two-vote margin. And you're always, you know, to get 52 people is very hard. If we had 60 or 60 votes, we could do something differently. But we're never going to get a Democrat vote. They're never going to vote for us. If I had the greatest bill in the history of the world, they would not vote for us because they hate the Republicans, probably hate me, but they hate the Republicans so badly that they can't see straight. So they're always going to vote against us. It's really a shame right. because, and that's one of the problems that we have when people come into my office about lowering drug prices, lowering other things. The Democrats are always going to vote against us. It's been simmering for years. The hatred has been there for years, not just with me. I mean, the hatred's been there for years. You know, when I was in Washington years ago, I'd come in and Republicans, they'd fight with the Democrats during the day, and then you'd see them after dinner at a restaurant and get their families would be out. I mean, they got along. The hatred is so incredible. And it, honestly, it's been like that for a long time. It's been like that through the Obama years. It's been like that right. to a large extent through the Bush years. But if we had 60 votes, perhaps we'd do it a different way. But the only way you're going to get it passed is with Republican votes, because the Democrats, no matter how bad Obamacare is, and it's the worst anybody's ever seen, it's a disaster. Obamacare is a disaster. The premiums are going up at numbers at as high as 116 percent. And by the way, this year will be the worst year of all. And I said the other day, they criticized me, I said, look, Obama's gone, smart guy, he put things on, 17 is going to be the worst year because he's gone. He knew that was the year. I mean, you know, let him be out before it implodes. Obamacare is imploding. It's a disaster. And the Democrats know that. If we had the greatest health care bill ever in history, and we needed eight votes from the Democrats to get us up to the 60 number that you would need, they wouldn't vote for it. So it's a very selfish thing. They're doing a very, very bad disservice to the country. This bill has, as one of its centerpieces, a tax cut for investors that would primarily benefit people making over $250,000 a year. Already done pretty well in the past 10 years, as you know. Yeah. A Bloomberg analysis showed that counties that voted for you, middle class and working class counties, would do far less well under this bill yeah. than the counties that oh, voted for Hillary, the more affluent counties. I know. It seems like maybe this isn't talking. consistent with the message of the last election. No, a lot of things aren't consistent. But these are going to be negotiated. We've got to go to the Senate. We're going to see yep. what happens in the Senate. Now, right now, we have five or six senators that look like maybe they're not going to... I'm talking about Republican right. Senate, because we're not going to get one Democrat to vote for it. Again, if this bill were perfect, if it was the greatest thing for Democrats and Republicans, we wouldn't get one Democrat vote. They're going to vote against it because of selfish, because of stupidity, because it's politics. It's really bad for our country, what's going on. I mean, what's going on for years, but it's really bad for our country. Uh, we will take care of our people, or I'm not signing it. Okay, just so you understand. This Are is you very preliminary. Paul Ryan, I mean, it doesn't seem like you agree on economics, or foreign policy, or social policy. Are you confident that you share enough in common that he can, he's on board with your interests? I think he is on board with the American people. I do believe that strongly. Uh, I think he is on board with my presidency. I think he wants to make it very successful. Uh, I like him. We had our run-ins, as you probably have yes. heard uh, initially. But I think he is very much on board. He wants to do the right thing. That I believe 100%. We're going to take care of the people. And by the way, if we're not going to take care of the people, I'm not signing anything. I'm not going to be doing it, just so you understand. Right. I'm in a little way, I'm an arbitrator. We have the conservatives. We have the more liberal side of the Republican Party. We have the left. We have the right. Within the Republicans themselves, you've got a lot of fighting going on. We have no Democrats. Again, no matter what we do, we're never going to get a Democrat. Maybe we'll get one along the way. Right. Now, if we could get, and, and the one thing they don't add is phase three, because phase three makes a lot of things very good. But if we could get some Democrat vote, 
we could change the bill. We could have a different, we could have a, a repeal, which really essentially we have anyway, but we could have a specific repeal. But we're not going to get any Democrats. No matter what we do, it doesn't matter what we do. We're not going to get. For phase three, we're going to get some Democrats, I right. believe. Because phase three, there'll be incentives added. And there's so many good things, including that's where I'm going to put the bidding for medicine. I'm going to put that. I want them to put that in phase three. Phase three is a part of it. You have phase one, which you know about. Yeah. You have phase two, which is really not a phase. That's where our secretary, who is a terrific guy, by the way, Tom Price, is going to sign away. He's going to sign his heart away, and he's going to get rid of those horrible things that have been signed over the years. And then phase three, a lot of the goodies are added in, and we're going to add now in medicine. We think we're going to be right. able to do that. Or I'm going to have a separate bill for the bidding of medicine. We're going to bring the cost of medicine way down, prescription drugs and drugs. So on March 4th, 6.35 in the morning, you're down in Florida, and you tweet, the former administration wiretapped me, surveilled me at Trump Tower during the last election. Um, how did you find out? You said, I just found out. How well, did you learn that? I've been reading about things. I read in, I think it was January 20th, a New York Times article where they were talking about wiretapping. Uh, there was an article. I think they used that exact term. Uh, I read other things. I watched your friend Brett Baer uh, the day previous where he was talking about uh, certain very complex sets of things happening and wiretapping. I said, wait a minute, there's a lot of wiretapping being talked about. I've been seeing a lot of things. Now, for the most part, I'm not going to discuss it because we have it before the committee and we will be submitting things before the committee very soon. That hasn't been submitted as of yet. But it's potentially a very serious situation. So 51,000 people retweeted that. So a lot of people thought that was plausible. They believe you. You're the president. Yeah. You're in charge of the agencies. Every intelligence agency reports to you. Why not immediately go to them and gather evidence to support that? Because I don't want to do anything that's going to violate any strength of an agency. You know, we have enough problems. And by the way, with the CIA, I just want people to know, the CIA was hacked and a lot of things taken. That was during the Obama years. That was not during us. That was during the Obama situation. Mike Pompeo is there now doing a fantastic job. But uh, we will be submitting certain things, and I will be perhaps speaking about this next week. But it's right now before the committee, and I think I want to leave it there. I have a lot of confidence. Why in the not wait to tweet about it until you can prove it? Don't because, you devalue because, well, your because, words when you can't provide well, evidence? Well, because the New York Times wrote about it. You know, not that I respect the New York Times. I call it the failing New York Times. But they did write on January 20th using the word wiretap. Other people have come out with. Uh, right, but you're statements. the president. You have the ability to gather all the evidence do, you want. I do, but I think that, frankly, we have a lot right now. And I, I think if you watch. Uh, if you watched the Brett Bear and what he was saying and what he was talking about and how he mentioned the word wiretap, you would feel very confident that you could mention the name. He mentioned it, and other people have mentioned it. But if you take a look at some of the things written about wiretapping and eavesdropping, and don't forget, when I say wiretap, those words were in quotes. That really covers, because wiretapping is pretty old-fashioned stuff, but that really covers surveillance and many other things. And nobody ever talks about the fact that it was in quotes, but that's a very important thing. But wiretap covers a lot of different things. I think you're going to find some very interesting items coming to the forefront over the next two weeks.